Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. That was a happy song. I was yeah. jamming. <laughs> I'm usually like a new school kind of gospel yeah. girl, but that was that was good. That it kind of just brought my spirit up. So thank you so so much. Amen. And thank you, First Lady, for the water. It's so funny. God always knows what you need when you need it because I was I got in my car and I was like dang my mouth is dry <laughs> I need some water or maybe I should stop at the store and get some mints and I was like I don't want that to throw off my morning so I was like well praise the Lord God knew and so thank you sis I appreciate you I brought it up here so excuse me if I have to get a couple sips praise the Lord um, I just wanted to say good morning to those in the sanctuary Good morning Good to morning. those on Amen. Zoom land. Amen. 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 And this word is, I think it's going to be short and sweet, but we'll see what God does. I don't, you know, usually I come up here with a, a gang of notes and yeah. today just a few pages. So we'll see. Right. But, you know, if you know somebody who needs a word of encouragement today, yeah. Get them on the line because this this could just be a few minutes and then we're done and you know they miss they miss the word but um I just thank God for His word He is a great big wonderful God Amen. I'm so blessed today to be here I'm blessed to have made it yet another day Amen, Amen. Amen. and so we don't take those things for granted but I'm gonna go ahead and open up with a word of prayer. And Lord, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we just thank you, God, that this is the day that you have made, and we will rejoice no matter what, Amen. because it's the day that you have made. And I am just so excited to be here, God, and I just ask you to use me. I pray that you would touch me from the crown of my head to the very soles of my feet, God. And I pray that you would frame my mouth, God, to say what thus saith the Lord, not too much, not too little, but just yeah. what you would have me to say, God. I pray for the hearers on today, God, that they would get a piece of you through this word, God, and that that piece would sustain them for the rest of their days, God, that it would fall on good ground, God, and spring forth in due season. And I'll just remember to give you all praise, glory, and honor for all that you do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen. and amen. 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 So... Well, this morning we are um, we're still in the book of Joshua. Praise the Lord! And I got your text, uh, Pastor Harris, that we're gonna be doing some winding up. And yeah. I don't know. <laughs> I've only been up a few. I'm looking at man. I still got it quite a ways to go. But praise the Lord, we gonna we gonna take it in stride. Amen. 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 So uh, Joshua has been a great book. It kind of it it uh, pairs well with the book from the previous couple years, which was Deuteronomy for me. And uh, today we're gonna be talking about uh, teaching out of Joshua 5 and 6. So praise the Lord, if you could go ahead and open your Bibles to Joshua 5. And um, if I were to entitle this message, I would call the title, Objects in the Mirror Amen. Are Closer Than They Appear. Amen. Let me go ahead and say that again. Objects in the mirror are closer than they appear. So this phrase, we've probably all seen it at some point in our life. Amen. And it's the, it is the engraved part on the passenger side of mirrors on side mirrors on cars. It's a warning and it's um, a warning to the driver um that objects in that mirror are probably closer than they appear and so the driver can make the necessary adjustments to make a well calculated decision amen amen so objects in the mirror are closer than they appear and so it is with blessings in our lives. Amen? Amen. So turn to your neighbor and say, my blessing is closer than it appears. My blessing is closer than it appears. Amen. No matter what it looks like, your blessing 
is closer than it appears. Hallelujah. Thank right. you, Lord Jesus. We just thank you, oh God. Hallelujah. Lord. We can be weak. We are weak, huh? But God in us is strong. Amen. Every minute of every day, he is our strength. Amen. So when we do a kind of a, well, you know, we want to take a minute to just pause and think about the chapters that we've taught. Um, I've taught over the last couple of times I've been up and what has happened up until this point. Amen. And so the nation of Israel had been wandering in the wilderness for 40 years. They turned what should have been an 11 day walk to a 40 year me meandering. Amen. Why? Because it was due to their unbelief. And the generation died, and Mo, including Moses, he died as well. Without he saw the promise afar off, but he never obtained the promise. So as a result, Joshua is now primed to lead the nation of Israel into the promised land. And following the good report from the two spies that had gone to visit Rahab, they had begun to move forward. Joshua was going to accomplish what God wanted 40 years prior, but did not obtain due to unbelief and fear. They saw giants. They saw a fortified city. Probably the city they saw was Jericho. Amen. So what they saw completely caused them to respond in fear. What is fear? Fear is is false evidence appearing real. So how do you abolish fear in your life? And this is an area that I know I need to work on because even my kids, my kids, you know, out of the mouth of babes, right? We're on vacation and I just get wrapped around the axle pretty quickly. And they're like, you, you have seem to have anxiety a lot. You need to like relax. <laughs> I'm like, okay, Lord. And I'm like, well, what do you, I said, give me an example. And they're like, so we were at the airport, you know, I got to get there three hours ahead of time yeah. <laughs> just in case. Right. Because I don't want to be stressed out. Mm -hmm. So we're in the TSA line. And for some reason, I don't know why all of a sudden now it's like taking forever to get through TSA and I'm like, man, what's going on? And I, it was funny because I saw the Turners in line because they were going on their vacation. So it was kind of fun. And I was chatting with my brother and my sister and I'm like, what's going on up there? Why is it taking, you know, and I'm looking at my watch. It's like, it's been like 20 or 30 minutes and my, my, Kids are like, calm down. We got to the airport three hours ahead. We will be fine. I'm like, okay. Second incident, we go on an excursion and, you know, like having fun. And I, you know, asked the folks on the cruise, like, what time do we have to be back? And they were like, uh, when you could take the, it was uh, Cayman Islands. So you have to take the cat, the taxi from the boat to the shore because the boat can't come all the way in. Right. right, right. So they're like, man. Make sure you get the last taxi uh, boat taxi is at 315. I said, oh, we gonna be back in plenty of time. <laughs> so our driver, once we got to shore, we had a driver and uh, he was like, you know, ask the group what time you guys want to be back. And I'm like, in plenty of time. So he was like, OK, I'll be back by 130. So one o'clock, I'm standing out there. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, well, I'm not on CP time usually, right? And so I'm standing out there and I'm looking for the guy. And there's a slew of taxis. And I'm like, oh, you know, Venice, thank you so much for taking a picture of the driver's door with the phone number. And I'm calling this at 1. But he said he was going to be there at 1.30. But, you know, I'm like, come on, come on. Yeah. <laughs> and they're like, Mom, chill out. You don't need to call. Is it 1.30? I'm like, no, it's not. But you know what? I called anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to make sure. So, you know, it's an area I need to be work on. And so how do we cast, how do we abolish fear in our life? We abolish it because the Bible said that perfect love casteth out all fear. So that tells me I need to perfect my love even more. Amen. And so we have to work on our love. 
so that we can be fearless. Amen. So before we get there, Joshua has sent two spies that had lodged with Rahab and came back with a good report. It encouraged the people that yes, the Lord had in fact given them the land. Amen. This was the land that they had been wait, waiting on. Right. As we move through Joshua 3, I taught that the that God allowed the entire nation to cross over the Jordan, which was a miracle in itself because we were told that that was during El Nino. It was flood season. So the river was at its highest stage. And what does God do? He splits the river and they go through it on dry ground. God was doing something absolutely miraculous to bring them to the land. But check this out. The moment they were about to possess the promised land was the moment that they ran into the biggest crisis of their lives. It was, they were on the brink of their next blessing. They were on the brink of the promised land that they had waited for all this time. Isn't it something how we can experience in life the best of times and the worst of times all at the same time? We can have a really great situation in one area of our lives. It could, you know, maybe our finances are great. And then we can have a horrible relationship with someone in our life. We can experience it on a spectrum. Amen. So they were about to possess the promised land, but they had no experience to match the opportunity that was in front of them. They didn't have any experience with this type of fight. And it's a terrible thing to have a door of opportunity open, but you don't have the expertise or you're not prepared to receive it, amen? And so God is, wanting to prepare you for that open door. Amen? Turn to your neighbor and ask your neighbor, are you prepared for the open door? Are you prepared, prepared for, the for the open door. door? Let's get prepared for the open door. Amen. Amen? They weren't afraid to fight. That wasn't a thing. Their fathers had fought the Amalekites um, years of prior and whooped them. <laughs> so that wasn't the deal. But they were about to come up on the strongest, the biggest city ever. Amen. It was, the Bible says it was a fortified city. It, in other words, the walls were so high and so wide that chariots could run across the perimeter. They were basically a bunch of farmers. They were agriculturists um, and they had been wandering in the wilderness. But this fight was a fight of the, their lifetime, amen? They didn't have any experience in this area. And if that wasn't enough, it was at Gilgal um, where Joshua goes out and gets a flint stone to sharpen all the knives to circumcise all of the men. So we're gonna go ahead and go into chapter five and I will read <clears throat> starting at the first verse. As soon as all the kings of the Amorites who were beyond the Jordan to the west and all the kings of the Canaanites who were by the sea heard the Lord had dried up the waters of the Jordan for the people of Israel until they had crossed over, their hearts melted, and there was no longer any spirit in them because of the people of Israel. So these people are already like, oh my God, what kind of people are these that can, their God can open up a, a river and they can cross through on dry land. So it said their heart melted. Amen. At that time, the Lord said to Joshua, make flint knives and circumcise the sons of Israel a second time. So Joshua made flint knives and circumcised the son of Israel at Gabbath 
Karal. I don't know how to pronounce that. And this is the season why Joshua circumcised them. Or this is the reason why Joshua circus circumcised them. All of the males of the people who came out of Egypt, all of the men of war had died in the wilderness on the way after they had come out of Egypt. Though all the people who had came out had been circumcised, yet all the people who were born on the way of the wilderness had come out of Egypt, had not been circumcised. <coughs> Excuse me. Circumcision was especially important in the Bible days because it was a sign of covenant. We saw this in Genesis 17. God instituted circumcision. He had made an everlasting covenant with Abraham. This act demonstrated the Israelites' commitment to let God and let and be and let God be in their lives. It also reminded them of God's part of the covenant, which says God promised to make Abraham the father of many generations, that he would be faithful and give them a land to call their own. And in the New Testament, the act of baptism represents the putting away of the filth of the flesh. Amen. And that part serves as, um, you know, the part that they're cutting off doesn't serve for any purpose. It's um, not productive. It doesn't have any productive properties. It's just flesh. And so when we get ready to receive our blessing, and walk into our land, there's some things that we have to cut away or get rid of, amen, so that we can be prepared to receive what God has for us. The scripture tells us that normal circumcision was usually done by the father to the son, amen, and think about how something that has no life in it could cause so much pain. Amen. So Joshua um, is tasked at doing this to, to, to make preparation. Amen. So going back to verses four through seven, and this is the reason why Joshua circumcised them. All the males of the people who came out of Egypt through all the people who came out had been Though all the people who had come out of Egypt had been circumcised, yet not, not all had been. For the people of Israel walked 40 years in the wilderness until all the nation, the men of war who came out of Egypt, perished because they didn't obey the voice of the Lord. The Lord swore to them that he would not let them see the land that the Lord has sworn to their fathers to give us, a land flowing with milk and honey, so it is their children whom we have raised up in their place. So God had raised up another generation. And so that Joshua circumcised for now, for they were uncircumcised because they had not been circumcised on the way. Amen. And the reason for this is because the people were dying by the day. And so generally the custom was that the fathers um, circumcise their son when the child, the boy child is eight days old. That was, the, that was the custom of that time. So how many knows when, how many people here know when you don't get what you should have gotten done when you were a baby boy, it's gonna be much more painful to go back and do that as a grown man, amen? Amen. So Joshua has to go back and fix what the father should have done during that time frame. But the great thing about God, he's always willing to start over. Amen. And when you think you should have gotten something from way back then, God can bring restoration and bring it back full circle to you. In Joel 2.25, the word says, and I will restore the years that the locust hath eaten, the canker worm and the caterpillar, 
and the pommel worm, my great army, which I sent among you. You are this close to your next blessing, but God won't let you go in, in your current shape. There's some things that need to get fixed first. So let him fix it. And some of these things that he's going to fix are going to hurt. Amen. What do you mean, Sister Tracy? What does that mean? It means that eating humble pie when you want to say the last word. God will shut all of that down. Amen. <laughs> it hurts, right? Anything of the flesh hurts. So we have to die consistently every day, every second of every day to our flesh. He had to cut away the flesh so that they could reach their promise. Amen. But he couldn't let them in till that flesh was cut. Amen. Or what about when, um, you know, it's so much easier to hold a grudge and be angry, right? Instead of saying, I'm sorry. Sometimes you got to fix some stuff that hurts because your flesh has to die. And I was talking to one of my good friends and he was telling me about years ago when he um, had gotten divorced and then his ex-wife had came back and she had apologized. She called him and apologized and she was like, yeah, I'm sorry for everything. And there was a lot of things that had happened during that um, situation. And he was just like, okay. It was like she, she didn't go into any level of detail. <laughs> she didn't say any specifics and sometimes that's hard to receive right because it's like well you're not even telling what you're sorry about you're not articulating it right so um but but we're called we're called to forgive but that person is also called to get it right amen there's something about getting it right that can set you free and i told a story a long time ago about a trip that we had gone on and we were in Cozumel, Mexico. Oh, and there was this guy, made, you know, I was just getting sick of everyone coming up saying, do you want to buy this? Do you want to buy that? I'm hungry. I'm ready to go get something to eat. And uh, this guy, you know, and we had been asked over and over. And this guy, he came up to us and was like, do you want uh, <laughs> do you want to buy this bracelet? And I was really snarky and I actually felt really bad, but I said something along the lines like, no, I'm good. My daughter can make one of those. <laughs> and I didn't really even think about it. It just kind of came out that way. And that's, you know, sometimes I'm like that. And then my daughters and my mom, they wouldn't let me live that down. They were like, oh, you hurt his feelings, right? And then I, st I started feeling God started convicting me. And I was like, you know, that was rude of me. That was really rude, uh, but I was hungry. <laughs> so, uh, so anyway, but God will allow you to get things right, okay? So what is such a blessing? So I felt to totally terrible, obviously. It was obviously the situation had come and gone. It was over with, and they were still giving me a hard time. Do you know, several years later, when we went back, I ran into that man and I was able to apologize. Wow. He probably didn't remember me because he probably gets it all the time. I gave him a hug and I said, you know, I'm sorry. I was being grumpy that day and I was hungry. I was hangry and uh, it, he just smiled and we took, I have pictures of us like with our arms around each other. And it was just so amazing to be able to just like, let that go. So God will give you an opportunity to get it right. It's time to get it right. So you can be blessed. Amen. All right. So I'm, as I'm teaching, I'm preaching to myself. Amen. Right. Right. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> so we have to go back and fix some things. And the issue is, you know, they, um, you know, they're in Gilgal, which means circle. And that's the place where, again, the cutting of the flesh happened. The problem is, is that they're hurting and they're, they're weak. This has weakened them. I mean, a grown man having a circumcision is, a, I'm sure, a painful, painful process. 
and which had weakened them. And so they're looking at this fortified city. They're looking at this strong city and they're like, man. So that's the issue is now they're at a weakened state. But the Bible says that they're, um, they're going to heal. They're, they're healing now over what they lost. Amen. So have you ever lost anything? I think we all have lost some things. Amen. Some things has to go because of what he's going to do next in your life. Amen. So sometimes we're holding on dearly to things that have to go. But as I always say, the best is yet to come. So when the circumcising of the whole nation was finished, this is verse eight, they remained in their places in the camp until they were healed. And the Lord said to Joshua, today I have rolled away the, the reproach of Egypt from you. And so the name of that place is Gilgal to this day. So God was recompensing he was um abolishing those things that were on them right and so it was a spiritual thing amen some things can only be fought in the spirit amen not in the flesh so there has to be a cutting away of the flesh amen Verse 10, while the people of Israel were encamped in Gilgal, they kept the Passover on the 14th day of the month in the evening on the plains of Jericho. And the day after Passover, on that very day, they ate of the produce of the land, unleavened cakes and parched grain. And the manna ceased that day after they ate of the produce of the land. And there was no longer manna for the people of Israel but they ate the fruit of the land of Canaan that year. Amen. So don't be afraid when your old blessing stops because it's only a sign that a new blessing is on the way. Amen. The best is yet to come. Turn to your neighbor and tell your neighbor the best is yet to come. Best. Is yep. yet to come. Yep. Amen. So they were in a dilemma. They have no skills to go forward, or so they think, but they have a situation that's ahead of them. They've gone through this painful procedure and they have a provision of change. Amen. So God is causing us to now make a decision. You can either resort to your old place and remain all comfy, cozy, and miss your blessing, amen? Or you're going to have to want it bad enough to get out of your comfort zone. Pick one, amen? Are you ready to come out of your comfort zone to attain God's blessings. Are you ready to come out of your comfort zone to obtain your promised land? Ask yourself this. All of the situations that I've gone through and decisions that I've had to make have always been outside of my comfort zone. With nothing in sight, making big decisions and that's why you need the holy ghost so you can hear god's spirit do this do that amen signing my name off of a house and didn't have a new place to stay and not knowing if the new deal would even come through leaving jobs and be pr being presented with two options one that i had been there for a, year, a couple of years and established a rapport and been, you know, happy and comfy or go to this new place that has bad reviews online, you know, glass door review of a, like a 2.5, but it's closer to home. Which, which do I do? Okay, God, I feel in my spirit, you want me to go to the one that's not comfy and cozy that I'm not familiar with at all. I have to be able to trust 
trust him to do that. Amen. Mm -hmm. So knowing that your biggest blessings and the things that God has for you is right outside your comfort zone. Even teaching. When dad used to threaten me, he would be like, Sister Tracy, I want you to teach. If you don't teach one Sunday, I'm calling you up. And I'd be like, Dad, please don't, don't do that. <laughs> don't do that. He would laugh. He's probably serious in some ways. But then our late pastor Hackett seen what's in us, right? But what we don't see in ourselves and says, Sister Tracy? I'd like you to teach Sunday school. I'm like, what? <laughs> you sure about that though? <laughs> but it's helped me. It's helped me learn God's word. It's helped me even in my occupation to be able to get up and talk to people. Amen. So God always has a plan and he has provided provision to, for the plan. Amen. Mm -hmm. So they're, the, these men, they had been cut, but they had to let go of their flesh. They had to heal and they had to move forward. But how can they fight a battle when they're still hurting? But God, God has devised a strategy in Joshua 6. And that's when the Lord said to Joshua, see, I have given Jericho unto, into your hand with its king and mighty men of valor. You shall march around the city, all the men of war going around the city once. Thus shall you do this for six days. Seven priests shall bear seven trumpets of, trumpets of ram's horns before the ark. On the seventh day, you shall march around the city seven times. And the priest shall blow the trumpets. And when they make a long blast with the ram's horn, when you hear the sound of the trumpet, then all the men shall shout with a great shout, and the wall of the city will fall down flat, and the people shall go up, everyone straight before him. Amen? So God had given them specific instruction. Amen. So they were listening to God's voice. He tells them every day, go around the city, go around the wall, and then go back and rest. Because he, God knew that they were still, even though they had, were healing or had been healed, there was still some discomfort. Okay. They, they had a major procedure there. Amen. And so, and then on the seventh day, God said, go around it seven times. Well, the trumpet, all of that. Amen. And so what stood out to me about that is God will give you specific instruction, but he's not going to give you a blueprint of everything of A to Z on how it's going to happen. Right. But one thing that's interesting about the scripture, no one questioned it. They didn't say, that doesn't make sense. Why, God, why would you have me walk around the city one day, go relax, then the next day, go around it again, go around it again, and on the seventh time, go around? That doesn't make any sense. But God uses the foolish things to confound the wise. That's right. And so it doesn't have to make sense. God has a plan. If those men would have gone in, in with their, you know, their healing, right? and stormed and tried to fight, they probably would have been taken down, right? Because they were still healing. They, there was a place of pain. And that's why it's so important for us to go back and deal with our pain. Things that we've gone through, I'm talking to myself, things that we've dealt with as kids. We have to go back and know it's a painful process to go back and revisit certain things that have happened the only path forward to go forward is to be able to heal so we can have that promise that God has given us. Because if you go in with all of the flesh or the things that are on us or the trauma or whatever, 
we're not going to feel the full the fullness of that blessing amen mm -hmm. and we all have done it amen we all have used things to combat pain whether it's to curl up in a ball and not want to talk to anybody or maybe you want to go and have that chocolate cake or or maybe some people who have smoked before or drank using things to pacify the hurt amen and so god wants us to cut the flesh though it be painful so that we can receive the promise amen 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 So what is God going to do? He's going to take them to the most difficult situation they faced. And if and do it in such a way that only he can get the credit for it. Who would have thought who could have thought that up that them walking around the city that that would automatically just make the walls come down. I, I couldn't have thought that up and neither I'm sure these folks when they probably envision themselves storming in this big fortified city but they didn't question god and they did they obeyed what god was saying because if he gets the credit for everything else will look like a piece of cake compared to jericho and as joshua was sitting there he's thinking yeah let's do this amen so if your comfort zone is more important than your blessing, you know, staying comfy, cozy, if that's more important, you'll never receive what all that God has for you. Because your blessing doesn't exist within the confines of comfort. There's always going to be a stretch. There's always going to be a pull. There's always going to be uncertainty. I'm pretty sure uh, Deaconess Cherie Stevenson, when she's left jobs and didn't have a job in sight, God was calling her to do that. She wasn't doing it. I'm sure her flesh was probably like, what? That doesn't make sense. How am I going to make ends meet? Amen? Mm -hmm. Or even when our pastor uprooted his family and moved to California, there was probably a level of uncertainty with that. But look at God, but God, if you want it bad enough, you're going to have to step out the comfort cozy zone. For those of you willing to get out of your comfort zone, God will do a new thing in your life. And remember, remember, remember that objects in the mirror are closer than they appear. So you may say, well, what are some ways that I can get out of my comfort zone? And there's some scriptures that will help you. Matthew 19 and 26. Jesus looked at them intently and said, humanly it's impossible, but with God, all things are possible. 2 Timothy 1 and 7, you know, you may be dealing with some fear, amen? For God has not given us the spirit of fear and timidity, but of power, love, and in self-discipline. Philippians 1 and 6, so if God has called you to it, he will give you the strength and the fortitude to complete it. And that scripture says, and I am certain that God who began a good work within you will continue his work until it is finally finished on the day when Christ Jesus returns. James 1, 5 says, and this is, you know, needing, I need more wisdom, Lord. If anyone lacks wisdom, you should ask of God who gives generously to all without finding fault, and it will be given to you. 
He's not judging you because you're asking for wisdom on how to deal with something. And Jeremiah 29, 11 says, God is the author of and finisher of your faith. Amen. And so he's just trying when the enemy comes in to make you doubt, know that God has conducted everything. And if we continue to go in the spirit, he'll bring us through. So in closing, objects in the mirror are closer than they appear. Your blessing is on the other side. Go get it. Amen. Amen. And that's all I have for you today. Amen. Amen. Let's give God a hand for the word this morning. Now, Sister Tracy was coming to us from the book of Joshua, another one of my favorite books, where Joshua takes over for Moses, who is not allowed to enter into the promised land. But as she began this morning, she said it was going to be a word of encouragement. And I received that because it was a word of encouragement. And she said that the title of her message was, was Objects in the Mirror Are Closer Than They Appear. And we have all seen this if we've driven any automobile of sorts. It's usually on the passenger side, as she described, in the side mirror. And it's just letting you know that, that whatever that object is, you know, it's probably a little bit closer <coughs> when the mirror shows it to be. And it's really relevant in my line of work, because I sell a lot of bigger trucks and and with big bodies that are on them. And, and as you're moving those vehicles around, it's very important that you use your side mirrors so that way you don't run into anything or run over anything, uh, especially if you're trying to maneuver it in tight areas, but those mirrors will help you uh, to see what is there. But she went on to say that, you know, that our blessings are closer than what they appear mm -hmm. you know and i believe that one day when we get to the other side and we're able to see clearly more so than what we can see now we will realize that there were probably many blessings that were within fingers touch mm -hmm. that we missed out on because mm -hmm. we didn't realize mm -hmm. how close they were Amen. But she went on to talk about the book of Joshua, giving us just a little bit of a recap. And as I had said earlier, Joshua had assumed the leadership role for the nation of Israel because Moses uh, was no longer there. And that uh, the children of Israel, under Moses' leadership, through their disbelief, and disobedience had wandered in the desert land, in the wilderness for 40 years on a journey that should have only taken them 11 days, as she said. Mm -hmm. Imagine that, they were within 11 days of their blessings, but yet they wandered for 40 years. Mm -hmm. The first generation, died because they had a lack of faith but it was the second generation that god rose up that actually obtained the blessings and she said why did they fail to obtain their blessings because of fear how many times in life, and we can all probably relate one way or another, as fear gripped us, mm -hmm. caused us not to move forward in whatever it was. Mm -hmm. Because we just had a state of fear 
about whatever it was that we would not move. And she said that fear is false evidence yeah. appearing yeah. to be real. But we need to be ready at all costs. When God opens the door, tells us it's time to go, we need to move. We can't let fear hold us back. She said that, you know, uh, Joshua sent out the two spies to spy out the land. They came back with a good report, which really encouraged the people. of this promised land that God had set aside for them. She talked about how God miraculously opened up the Jordan River, allowed them to cross over, and how that sent shockwaves and fear into the people of Jericho because of the God that they were serving. They were looking at the nation of Israel and And looking how God opened up the river, allowed them to cross over on dry land. What kind of God is this that they serve? That's the same God that we serve. She went on to talk about how before they were allowed to go over, God commanded Joshua to circumcise all of the males. Because this has not been done since Moses had done it to their uh, fathers and grandfathers, the prior generation, they had been skipped over. But in order to be right with God, this had to be done. And when you think about that, you know, there are things that are in our lives as we are trying to build a closer relationship with him that there are some things that need to be circumcised or removed in order for us to get closer to him as she said that it's sometimes it can be a painful procedure to endure to cut ties with different ones, more family members that have very differing viewpoints or friends or, or other things that might be going on in your life that are running severe conflicts with your faith. You have to choose. You have to decide for yourself which way is going to work for me and my family. The same Joshua told these people, he made a statement or a declaration. He said, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. But as for you, you got to make up your own mind of what you want to do. But you have to be willing to, as she said, Die out to your flesh. Give up on all of your personal desires if they're in conflict with following Christ. She said that we have to allow God to fix us before we enter in. That might be fixing our attitudes might be fixing our hearts, allowing us to love one another, to forgive one another, helping us to get things right so that we can cross over and be with him. But she said that, ask the question, have you ever lost something in life? personal things that you bought, or maybe it might have been a loved one that 
is no longer here. We've all gone through loss in our life. And sometimes it's very difficult <clears throat> to get over those things. Sometimes they linger on. I was sharing with my wife. We were talking about loss. Mm. And you all know that, you know, her mother passed away at the first of this year. Mm -hmm. And I went on to share with her that this year, this month, in a couple days, that I lost my mom mm -hmm. 50 years ago. But it's still a very tender subject for me, even though it's been 50 years. But God mm -hmm. will help us through those things oh, yes. as only he can. No, but see, sometimes God will remove things and people to elevate us. Because if things remain the same, we would have never evolved into what God had planned for us. She said, we can't be afraid when we lose old blessings. Because see, it's the old saying that when God closes one door, he's opening up another. She went on to say this, that sometimes we can't move because we're so comfortable where we're at. We don't want to get out of our comfort zone. We don't want to do anything that appears to be uncomfortable to us. But she, unbeknownst to her, For her, she was actually tapping into a little bit of what I will talk about later. But see, if you're unwilling to get out of your comfort zone, sometimes you will miss out on the blessing that God has in store for you. We have to be willing to move, even though we can't see how it's going to unfold. But we have to understand that God always provides provisions for us to obtain that blessing, yeah. to be able to move, even if we can't see it. Yes. He makes it possible. She went on to say that how, as God was preparing them to march around the Jericho wall, and, and you can envision if you were there what they probably thought, looking up, towering that wall, how big it was, and how tall, and how thick. And they were probably wondering how are we going to be able to overcome this? But there's nowhere in this portion of Scripture where it shows that they doubted what God told them to do. He asked them to march around that wall once a day for six days. And then on the seventh day, he asked them to march around seven times and shout and to hear the blast of the trumpet. And that the wall would come tumbling down. And I can imagine many of us, and even point the finger at myself, sometimes when we see or hear things that are beyond our mental comprehension, that we're wondering, well, how is that going to happen? How is that going to be done? But she brought out the scripture that says, for God hath chosen the foolish things of the world to confine the wise. You see, she also mentioned that Sometimes we wonder why God just doesn't give us the full blueprint or understanding of what he's doing. Right. And the thought that came to my mind is that if he were to give it all to us, we couldn't handle it. Mm -hmm. We couldn't comprehend all the extensive details. Mm -hmm. 
You got to remember, God is God. And we are man and woman created by him. Our, our ability to obtain knowledge and understanding is finite. His is infinite. But with God, all things are possible. She gave us five points, and I kind of wrote them in my own words, but with God, all things are possible. If you believe in him, There is no fear in God, because if God is for you, who can be against you? She also said that God will provide. If he has called you to it, he will see you through it. God gives wisdom and understanding. I can relate one time early on in this career that I'm in now. One of the guys that had been in it for a long time didn't think that I could do this particular job because he made the comment, well, you know, there's so much, you know, engineering and knowledge and yeah. all of these different things that you'll have to understand and, and you can't just get it overnight. <laughs> and I kind of just brushed him off. <laughs> and I can remember I went on a training mm -hmm. that we were there for a week and I went back to Louisville, Kentucky, I believe is where it was, but we went a week. Mm -hmm. And towards the end of the week, we had a test on all that we had learned throughout and, and over all the different things that are pertinent to this job. Mm -hmm. And I can remember after the test, the instructor coming up to me and everybody else had went out and he whispered to me, he says, you know, he says, you did really good. You got 100% Whoa. as to where nobody else did. Amen. But see, I wasn't leaning on my own right. abilities. Mm -hmm. But the Bible says that through Christ, you can do all things. Mm -hmm. There are no limitations. Mm -hmm. So God will provide the wisdom. And last but not least, in my own words, what came to me was, see, we have to understand that God is the beginning yes. and the end of all things mm -hmm. because if he opened the door and allowed you to go in it and if he closed another door you know he's the beginning of that new opportunity and he's also the ending of that previous opportunity but see we have to understand as she said wrapping up here so others can say is that the objects in the mirror are closer than they appear. Don't miss out on your blessing because you think it's so far off or unreachable. Mm -hmm. Many times it's like right there, mm -hmm. right before you. But give her a hand. It was a powerful word this morning. A powerful word. I want to give everybody an opportunity that would like to share this morning. Anybody have a thought? Or something that they want to share on the word that was given this morning. All right. Praise the Lord. Thank you for that word to use you. That is so good. Wow. Um, I'm grateful for that word because through that word, I got the confirmation that I needed. Uh, mm -hmm. It's good to get confirmations. <laughs> yes, it's good to get confirmations. Um, the Lord gave me wisdom, just clarity, just boom, clarity. I was listening to something, and then the Lord just kind of threw that, went boom, just gave me some clarity on something that I'm supposed to do. And uh, it requires me to put something to the side that, you know, I, I really quite enjoy. It, it, you know, I don't know if I should. Uh, I'll say it. Um, okay, so I I quite enjoy food, right? You know, it's it's something we all we all have to eat. We all enjoy food, right? But that's something that I kind of have on the altar, right? Because there's moments when you know just indulge, right? And I'm just 
<laughs> just indulge and I can just kind of just whatever. But I have to be particular about that because um, sometimes I can get off track. Like you can get off track if you, you know, you can get off track. But anyway, so the Lord has led me to do something. And the man of God, the pastor, um, once said, uh, the people got it took them 40 years. Yeah. But it will only take 11 days. Yeah. Praise the Lord. So what the Lord gave me was something that I need to do yeah. for a particular amount of time. Uh, there's a reason for that. Praise the Lord. And like the man of God said, uh, when we get to see everything, we get to see how many times we were so close to the blessing. So close. Days away, wow. moments away. But because we just we get out of our comfort zone, we extended the, the time, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm so grateful for the word because it was confirmation for me. And enough is enough. And I thank God for what he's doing in my life. And I thank God for uh, a greater life ministries and the, the anointed vessels that he uses to bring the word for thank you so much that's so good Amen. who's next <clears throat> thank you for the word sister tracy um you just bring back the thoughts that uh you have and you be scared you, like you said fearful to do these things to walk out on these things and, and do these things but you scared what well, how you gonna do it or how you gonna say it and whatever and what people will say. But God is good, He will sit and tell you be be still for a minute so He can tell you and you listen. But He wants you to be still so that you can listen to what He has to tell you so that you can make your move. So that was me fear. Fear is, is my thing now, it's really uh, fearful. Like I want to speak to the people in the building because they old, old, just older people and they act like children. And you want to tell them to grow up and listen, but they want to run off at the mouth, just keep running off at the mouth, hurt others feelings and they don't even, even really know it. But yet and still, I, I'm kind of fearful to say something because I might get in an argument with them, in which I am a Christian and I don't want to be arguing with nobody. So you gave me courage to go ahead and say what I need to say when when it when it needs to be said. So thank you very much for that word. Amen. Yes, Sister Tracy. Awesome word. And, and uh, as I was driving here, what you said, it, you know, it was like, I was looking, I looked in my mirror, I said, yeah, <laughs> you just said that. And there it is, you know, and things are closer than what you, you know, what you realize. You know, and because of fear, we won't move. And I was just think, sitting here thinking, they sent how many men out? To scout oh, those spies. The two spies two. out? Two. two. They about, and those two spies, and how many people were in the land waiting for them? And you know, they brought that fearfulness, yeah. how we can bring yeah. our fear and uh, and, uh, and, oh, and put it on other people. Yeah. Yeah. You know? And I just thought about that. And we have to be, you know, I thought we have to be mindful not to uh, impress our fear on other people. That's right. Because everybody's not fearful. <laughs> exactly. You know what I'm saying? Everybody's not fearful. And some of, you know, and God is blessing me not, not to walk in fear. You know, that's a blessing not to walk in fear and to stand up and say, no, devil, uh uh. God did not give me the spirit of fear. Amen. And so that blesses me to encourage other people. If we can all grab hold of, uh, what are you afraid of? Who are you afraid of? 
You know, because God is bigger than anybody, anything. Oh, right. So why are we afraid? You know, and you know, I so I try to encourage people, don't walk in fear. We can accomplish so much when we're not walking in fear. If those men have not brought that fearfulness into the camp, and I'm thinking right now, maybe everybody wasn't fearful and they wanted to go on because of a, because of what What you did that stopped everything did that stop everything for everybody now everybody got a wonder in the wilderness because of what two or three may do mm -hmm. amen so i thank god for what he just gave me on that that's, that's truly a blessing so i just thank god for your word things are closer than what we realize and we just stand up and say i'm gonna go on no matter what that's i'm right. gonna see what because you know even in that god let me know some months ago, a year ago, that we're victorious in everything. God does not fail. So if he doesn't fail, how are we going to fail? That's right. Amen? That's right. Praise yeah. God. What an awesome you. word. Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Thank you, Sister Tracy. You know, sometimes it's hard to sit here and not say anything. You know, every Sunday I say, I'm going to let somebody else speak, you know, but that was a powerful message. And you were one of the speakers that I love to listen to Amen. because I love the how you bring it out for the people to hear um, that everyone is speaking on fearful. Oh, my God, that's <laughs> such a big play in my life was. Did you hear what I said? Well, wow. so many things you brought out that you said, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, um, how we abolish fear in our lives. I live a lot. Oh, it got me to thinking big time. Mm -hmm. Are we prepared for the open door? Mm -hmm. There's something about getting it right so that it will set you free. Mm -hmm. You got to be mm -hmm. set free. You got to go back and correct it That's before right. you can be set free. Mm -hmm. There's so many things you brought out. Are you ready to come out of that comfort zone? Oh, yes, I'm ready right. to come out. And I'm coming out of that comfort right. zone. And that's where Pastor Hackett, it, it took me back as you were teaching. That's where Pastor Hackett, Joyce Hackett, mm -hmm. played a big part in my life because she was pushing me out of that comfort zone. Amen. And I thank God for that. And I thank God for that. And as I move forward, God is moving me out of that comfort zone right. and I feel it and I see it and I thank God for that Amen. it's so much that you brought out that took me back and I'm asking God to keep pushing me where Amen. pastor was where God was using Amen. pastor to push me God is pushing me Amen. and come on out of that fearfulness come out of that comfort zone I'm coming out because God has shown me and he has done so much in my life Amen. and there's no way I'm going to sit back and not come out of that comfort zone. So I thank God for the word you brought forth. Amen. 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 We all, in many respects, have to let go and let God use us how he wants to. Because we sometimes are so fearful, as Mother Rosie said, about what others might do or say or whatever, but you know, the only one that we should be concerned about is uh -huh. what does God say? Amen. At this time, I want to uh, give space for our, our pastor. Pastor, are you there? Pastor Elijah? I am. I am oh. definitely here. <laughs> awesome oh. word today. God bless you, everybody. Sister Tracy, you did a great, great job today. That was a really great word. Um, you know, I wanted to add the T to the comfort because it feels like come forth. You know what I mean? Step out of where you're comfortable and and give God space to work, to show that he is, what, faithful. You know, and, you know, being fearful sometimes can cause, like you said, anxiety or feeling of nervousness. And if we just rest in knowing, if we just rest or take take hold of stepping out of fear or things that cause us to feel, you know, the effects of it, then that's where God can find us and be there for us. Really awesome. 
the way you and uh, just like uh was said you know the way that you bring it brings it so to a level of understanding that you can apply it in so many different ways really really great word thank you for it this morning like we say sometimes when we take a step forward god takes the leap <laughs> god takes the leap so there's really nothing to be afraid of and that's how new doors open that's how new opportunities find us sometimes things find us when we're not even looking or when we anticipate things without processing it before we allow our anticipation to make the room for us you know i've had situations in these last few months that i was kind of like i wonder if it's ever gonna you know take form i wonder if the word not in doubt but just in like man when, when is it gonna meet up and that's when you say God will bring things full circle back to us or it never really stopped moving. It just took a little bit more time to come back full circle. And I just thank, thank you for that reminder, because sometimes it can seem like it's a far off, but we know that there's no void in God. So I appreciate the word and uh, God continue to bless you in the way that that you uh, step into you're you're come you're you're stepping into a different level of comfort even in your teaching and everything else that you do god bless you amen, amen. yeah it's awesome word um elder stubblefield praise the lord amen good morning Harry. yeah can you hear me can you hear me I hear you okay Okay, yeah, hear great. You. Okay, great. Sorry about that. Um, yeah, this was a, an amazing word, Sister Tracy, in that um that scripture and, and Joshua, I had Joshua too, um a few, some years ago. Um and you know, that whole thing around six days, you know, go around the city, and on the seventh day, you know, go around the city and blow the trumpet and shout. Um, you know what's interesting about that? God uses these type of architects. Now, what I mean by architects, it it like like big structures, these objects. Um, you said that you you made the analogy of the things in the mirror are closer than they appear, which is great, which they are. And 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 I and I was thinking about that, and it just dawned on me uh, by revelation of the Holy Ghost that that God wants us to stop looking at things um, because if things are closer than they appear, then that means what you're looking at, not real. Okay. And then the other thing he says, we walk by faith and not by sight. And then the other thing, there were 10 brothers who went over to the land. Two came back, said it was doable. Eight um, came back. The other ones came back and said they, they couldn't do it. And so again, another example of not, going off of what you see. And so I believe that the the lesson is that is that when things appears um impossible or implausible or um or not feasible um means nothing if God has given a direction or a vision or a ministry or a goal to reach. Um because the devil will make anything look like anything that will make you say I can't do that or it's too hard for me or I'm not good enough or I'm not smart enough and so those are all things that leads to the lie and and the lie is that that we can't obtain the things that God promises but the truth is we certainly can obtain everything that God promises because God is not a man that he should lie nor the son of man that he should repent but he is God and he is the way the truth and the light which means that if he says that you've got a promised land then you got a promised land <laughs> if you got if he says you got healing then you got healing if he says you got finances then you got finances so it doesn't matter what's appearing but what does matter is how we respond to God's, God's unction, how we respond to the assignment, how we respond to the project, how we respond to the work, how we respond to the task, how we respond to 
anything that God puts in front of us in order for us to move forward. So that was powerful. So I thank the Lord for that message. And it is a reminder because if you look around the whole world, I mean, I mean, I mean, it's crazy. I was just sharing the other day with some people that, man, right now, I mean, it, somebody would be really, really off to not believe in God right now. I mean, you got the, the the world is heating up, right? The world's like, literally, the world is heating up. Global warming, that's real. That's not fantasy. That's real, okay? In addition to that, we got all these these things around uh, wars. And any minute, you know, anybody could say, I'm declaring war on you and we're going to launch a nuclear weapon. I mean, we hear that in the news every week. And so it's like, okay, how many other things are we going to need to see in order to understand that Jesus is coming back? So to me... Um, this is high time for every one of us to, uh, you know, kind of let go of excuses and uh, and not even pick them up anymore and just say, you know what, um, I don't I don't carry excuses and, and just drop them all and then go for whatever it is that God has in front of you. Because like you said, you know, that blessing is closer than than what it appears to be. And you know what? It's, it's, it's probably even closer than that, because the, we just got to have the faith and the strength and the resolve to get to that place where God has already ordained for us to be. So, amen. I, I'm not, I don't mean to ramble, but I just um, just thought that that was a powerful message and it has so many implications for us to move forward. And so God is leaving us without excuse today. Um, every one of us is with, without excuse. You think I can use Betty being sick and being disabled to be an excuse for me not to do what I have to do? I can't do that. I will not do that because God gave me a promise. And so I keep going every day, regardless of how, how it feels, regardless of, of what it appears to be, because God gave me a promise. And so I encourage everyone to hear what Sister Tracy delivered today through unction of the Holy Ghost, because God's telling us no excuses. Don't go, don't walk by what you see, walk by what I said, and wow. then we'll we'll walk into it. Amen. God bless. Amen. Yeah. Thank you, Elder. Uh, Amen. Glenda. You're welcome. Uh, <laughs> Sister Glenda. Yeah. Good morning, Saints. Good morning. Um, I'm gonna just piggyback on the fear part. I don't um I have a long testimony, but I'm not gonna go through that right now. So God's been taking me through some things, like basically things that I guess I was fearful of and it was my past it was my past and um he actually done got to the he actually done had me he took me back to my past um and it's something that was holding me for my future he let me know that as well so I just want to thank sister Tracy on that too because and even with with the gift that he gave me he's been showing me that as well and and he's He's just basically been telling me, don't be fearful for what I have for you. So I actually kind of been standing on it and just when it happens, it happens. And, and I'm not scared. I'm not, I don't feel fearful no more. Um, another thing too is like me being around certain people and I experienced it yesterday um, at my daughter's, you know, like they was drinking, you know what I mean? And it was just like, it was like, you want to drink? And I'm like, no, I don't, I don't want done. I don't want to drink. You know what I'm saying? So it's just some things that he has strengthened me in different areas of my life to move forward to the gifts that he wants to give me. And the, and the, not even just the gifts, the things that he wants to show me in life that's better than the worldly life. So I just want to thank you for that word. And later on, I'll give my testimony. <laughs> Praise the Lord. That's it. Amen. Thank you, Sister Glenda. Uh, anybody else have a thought this morning before we move forward? Okay, I can say one more thing before you guys move on, Pastor. Um, another thing, like I've been struggling, right. like like this my struggle, you know what I mean, uh, financially. Um, but I've been literally 
and I don't, you know, just like you guys say, you got to have faith and it, it's not right in front of you where you can see it, you know, out of sight, out of mind. But I'm standing knowing that God's going to provide for me. You know what I mean? So it's because that could, my, my, my thing, myself right. Amen. with right. me, I stop, I, 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 I fear a lot. Even my, in the past, like at church, since I've been going to greater light, me moving and me not moving, it was the fear that I had. You know what I mean? Me even growing within myself is fear because I feel like I'm getting judged. I'm getting looked at. But today, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, God is good. Sorry, you guys. But I don't have to fear no more. So it's just like, it's just a lot. It's it's a lot. I just thank God for whatever he's doing. I don't see it, but I'm believing. Amen. That's right. We got to trust in God no matter what. Amen. Thank you, Sister Glenda. Sister, um, Praise the Lord. Um, praise the Lord, Mr. Glenda. I thank God for what you did in your life. Um, just one other thing I, I feel to share is, you know, from what I was saying, it's not so much the food. Okay? Food is important, it's necessary. I think it's important to, you know, you know what your body needs, you know what's necessary to, for your body to be at its best, right? Um, but it's about, what's necessary for you to transcend yourself. That's what I think is the most important thing to say. Transcending, it's like when um, Sister Trace is going forth and she's talking about, the word is talking about them walking around the edifice, you know. That doesn't make any sense, like she said it, right? But in doing that, at, at a certain point, the, the people, the men, the men of God, they had to transcend themselves. That's, I think, what it comes down to. Because it's a spiritual thing. Like, God got in that thing, and he did what was necessary for them to go forth, right? And attain what was necessary for them to attain. For the building to come down and all that. We have to transcend. We have to become the best versions of ourselves, right? And so that's what it is. And so thank you, woman of God, for allowing the Lord to use you. It was definitely a confirmation for me. Me, and I thank you now God for allowing us to say something else. Praise the Lord. It was such a powerful word as the testimonies have, have illustrated. Uh, everybody got something out of this word. So just remember that God is closer than you think. Sometimes we think he's a far off, but he is right there with you. But Jesus said, I will never leave you. Oh, oh, thank you. That's what I do. Thank you. That's what he said. But at this That's time, free, Linda. Our service. About the transition. And we're going to be offering for those that are in the building. I would encourage those that are on the Zoom to participate as well. Um, you go to our website, www.greaterlight.org. Click on the giving tab and you can participate but we want to give you thanks for your offerings because that's what makes all of this possible building the zoom everything that we do it comes through your gifts into the kingdom amen And as those that are gathering their offerings or getting it together, we're just going to stand and have a word of prayer. And we're going to close out our Sunday morning service, Sunday school. Father God, we just, first and foremost, we just want to give you thanks for using Sister Tracy this morning. We ask a special blessing over her that you will continue to pour into her wisdom and knowledge and understanding of your holy and precious word that she might be able to come forth and rightly divide the word of truth and feed your sheep we pray in the name of jesus now we ask continue to cover her with the precious blood of her entire family her daughters her 
extended family. Continue to bless her as only you can. Now we ask, bless the words that we have heard today. Let them fall on good ground, I pray. Let them spring forth and manifest into great promise and purpose as you have spoken here today, Lord, we pray. Now we ask, bless the offerings that have been given this morning for the building of your kingdom, I pray. Bless the hands of every giver and even those that were not able to give this morning. But we ask, Lord, let it be more than enough for the Greater Light Ministries. And we pray, Lord Jesus, that you will give it back into the hands of those that participated many times over, that they will continue to be able to help to build your kingdom. Now we ask, take us from this part of the service, looking with great expectations of all that you will do in the service to come. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 For those that are on the Zoom, we're going to Take a short intermission and we'll probably start back up at about 22. Amen. Wow.